The island of Hawaii is better known as the Big Island because it's huge. It's bigger than all the other Hawaiian islands combined with a more diverse landscape. And need I note that it's the photographer's paradise? I'm Jefferson Graham, a lifelong photographer, writer, and video maker. I am your guide for today's photo walk. The whole goal of the Photo Walks channel is to take you to some pretty great places mm -hmm, and show you how, when, and where to get great photos. Our photo walk begins here at Rainbow Falls on the left side of the big island of Hawaii in Hilo. We'll continue photo walking through town. Of course, we'll be jumping in the car, walking, driving, walking, driving. You're in Hawaii, that's how it works here. So when people think the big island Hawaii, they think that volcano, that erupting volcano that was in the news with lava all over the place that was actually in a small section on this side near Hilo, though not in Hilo. On our photo walk of the Big Island, we are gonna go from the lush green rainforest that is Hilo and work our way around from the east to the west through the Hawaii Volcano National Park, the black sand beaches and coffee farms, and finally to the dry west side of the island and Kailua Kona. The other islands are so small that you run out of things to do. On the Big Island, you can be here a week and not see the whole island. You can have any kind of environment you would like. You can have snow, you can have beaches, you can have desert. There's so many places to explore on the Big Island. I like the Hilo's charm. We still have all the Hawaiian styles over here. It's like going back in time. It feels like you're stepping into another place before Marriott, before Hilton, before all the giant resorts. You don't hear anything about luau's. You don't, uh, you don't hear a lot of the Hawaiian music everywhere, though you do in some stores. It's just not commercial. And that's what uh, was really fun about it, beyond the fact that it's gorgeous. I mean, it's just so lush and green. Uh, it rains a lot here, but I'm from Seattle originally, and I'll tell you that it doesn't rain as often. It may be heavier rain, right? Uh, so that's what keeps it green here, though. We call it liquid sunshine. Now, I'm figuring you're not going to do this all in one trip, so I've broken it up into four parts. Part one, your first day is in downtown Hilo in Environs. Part two, you will travel northwest up the coast for the four-mile scenic drive. Part three brings us to the Hawaii Volcano National Park in nearby Puna, which was home to all that lava flow not that long ago. And of course, we'll end our photo walk on the dry side of the island in Kailua, Kona. Now, the great thing about starting in Rainbow Falls is that it's right there in Hilo, just a few blocks from downtown. And it's one of two major falls in the area. The other is the Kaka Falls, which we will see on our second day. So just park the car, walk out, and here it is. Be sure to also go up the hill for an overhead view. No to drone fans. No drone. After the Rainbow Falls, be sure to drive up the road just about one mile to go to the Boiling Pots. Here you will get another cool angle on the waterfalls. Then it's the Kawamana Caves, but be warned, flip-flops are really tough on this rocky surface, so put on your sneakers and a headlamp will help you see as it's really dark in there. Photos will be tough in the caves because of the illumination, so be sure to grab your shot at the beginning of your journey when you have a little daylight to light your image. What's known as Hilo Town is a little downtown area that doesn't look like it's changed much since the 1950s. A collection of shops, cafes, and places to buy shave ice. That's a lot of fun to walk around. Another must while in Hilo, the old Hilo Library, and only in Hawaii building that was erected in 1951. Despite Hilo's reputation as a rainforest, the library is open air and somehow does not get people wet. The market is home to some 200 local farmers with exotic fruits and other local specialties. It is open every day, but the two key shopping days are Wednesday and Saturday.
How many of these things do you crack open a day? Maybe 40, 50, sometimes 100. Wow. And you just go to a tree and go find some coconuts? Yeah, yeah. Anywhere I'm invited or I get paid to take them down sometimes, like tomorrow. Elsewhere in downtown Hilo, you'll want to spend a little time with the statue of King Kamehameha, who welcomes you to town in the Waiola State Park. He is considered the man who united the Hawaiian Islands back in the 1800s and is still revered. And then G, that's all I know. That's all I know. I know D. Yeah, you know D. G, yeah, G. D, uh. See, he's better than me. <laughs> The most developed area of Hilo is Old Banyan Drive, home to the resorts of Hilo, a beautiful park and many huge banyan trees that line the streets. The must stop for photographers is the small Coconut Island, which can be navigated to over a small footbridge. It's a nice friendly beach with a great view of town from the shore. Another beach, Richardson's, down the way is one of those off the road beaches with barbecue pits and bathrooms that is said to be popular with local turtles uh, we didn't find any in our visit, but we did see folks having lots of fun. We can't talk about Hawaii without the hula, and of course Hilo is the hula capital of the state. Hilo is the home for the premier statewide hula event, the annual Merry Monarch Festival, where thousands descend into town. It gathers the best hula dancers from the state for a mega competition. Here it comes. Great. Pineapples. I happen to be a pineapple freak. They serve more than just drinks and pineapples. They have some great burgers, chicken, salad, stuff like that. I'm a fan of the Cafe Pesto, which is right there in the center of town. A lot of really fun little places, little smoothie places, little Thai places, up and down the street, little coffee places. Hello. Good morning, sunshine. My name is Paul. Food-wise, may we highly recommend a visit to the smallest cafe we've ever encountered? A word of warning about Paul's Place Cafe, you'll need a reservation as there are only three tables. You are Paul, this yep. is your cafe? Yeah. But you can't give me a seat? No. No, it's up to her? No. no. Gotta talk to the big boss here. Can you tell me why you only have three tables? Because I couldn't afford to buy four. Breakfast capesse, tomatoes, olives, basil, mozzarella cheese, two eggs poached nicely on Sisson Cristini's, finished with crispy bacon and more basil. Real imitation maple, young lady. <laughs> this is a real McCoy here. Yeah. secret of a restaurant with only three tables? Mm. You don't want to have more people in? Um, I, this, is, this is fine for me, yeah. It's not about the money, because I already have money. It's um, how you say? Um, what, what do you call this? Oh, something to do in the daytime. Well, what do you generally tell people when they say, why is it? I mean, you turn around, you turn A lot of away. people away. You turn half yeah. the business away yeah, I do. Day, right? I do. I give my overload to the other restaurants around here. Yeah. Yeah, and you have a small restaurant because you just like to cook for your friends? Well, I don't, I can't afford a bigger restaurant. How is that? Yeah. I like them intimate, family style, like coming into my house. You can't beat standing on the beach early in the morning watching the sunrise and the surfers and some of those massive swells. On this side of the island, Hilo, is where the sun rises. Kona, the other side, is where it sets. Now, before we take off on part two of our journey, remember, you gotta wake up early at least one day on the island to catch the morning sunrise and the surf action. In Hilo, that would be on Hanalei Beach. It's where I did my time lapse. 
I love this still of a lone surfer looking up from the water to the cruise ship approaching. Parking is limited, the beach is rocky and a little rough, but boy do those surfers let it rip and make for great photo subjects. Now we're gonna head west out of town onto the four mile scenic drive. Here there are some picturesque rainforests, hikes, a botanical garden, the Akaka Falls waterfall, and for snacks, the What's Shaken food stand, which is famous for their smoothies. See what happens when you pull off the road? Just right off the side of the road on the four mile scenic drive up the coast from Hilo. A river runs through it. The scenic drive will take you to the botanical gardens with 2,000 species of exotic plants, and it's a really popular spot with tourists. The admission is rather steep, but if you want to impress your friends with great shots of only in Hawaii plants, this is a great place to check out. And don't forget to stop at What's Shaken. You are out in the middle of some really lush green farmland, so even if you don't get anything, well, it's worth a stop just to see it. Finally, before the falls, there's a really cute tiny Hawaiian town called Hanama. It was once home to sugar plantation workers. Now it exists to service the tourists who drive through to visit the falls. We photographers like to photograph the great old buildings while also enjoying the antiques, Hawaiian shirts, and that great old church. Now on to Akaka Falls. Of course, this waterfall, Akaka, is nearly 500 feet, where our first one, Rainbow, is just under 80 feet. Either way, both are incredibly awesome and worth the time to take a look at. Photo tip wise, I'm here at the worst time of day. I'm here at midday afternoon. I wanna see some sunlight on that waterfall, which means morning. This is the Volcano National Park. This is where you would see lava on all the news reports just a few years ago. Haven't seen any lava since, but it's still some hot stuff underneath. I'm standing by a steam vent. As you can see, lots of stuff coming out of the ground and a lot more to see. Let's take a look. The park is a must for any island visitor, some 45 minutes from Hilo and about two and a half hours from Kailua Kona. The sales proposition is that you might get to see a thriving volcano at work or its aftermath. When we visited, Kilauea was not gurgling. Still, you get to see some pretty massive landscape covered in hardened lava and take some cool hikes. The park is generally packed with tourists, so the best time to visit is early in the morning, which is also the best time for photography. Before you leave, be sure to head south for a bit and see the town of Puna, which nearly got wiped out by the 2018 Kilauea eruption. Here, hardened lava is all over and roads that once offered throughways have come to a dead stop. This is what it did look like when my friend, the photographer Anthony Quintano, got these amazing overhead shots of the eruption from a helicopter. That was really nice.
Now that you're on the west side of the island, the first thing you'll notice is the radically different look to the landscape. Lots of dry lava everywhere in a very different warm climate. This is the driest section, not only the driest section of the island, it's the driest section of all the islands. It has more sunshine per year than all the other ones. Now, most of your top photo spots are actually in the east, not in the west, but you know, we found some stunners up here as well. And let's go find the best photo spots on the island, the west side of the island of Hawaii. So of course, this side of the island is very different from what we saw in the east. You've got the huge resorts, you've got the luau's, you've got the timeshare offers, you've got the endless pitches for activities, and you know my feeling about those. The best things in life are free, so let's take a look at some of the free stuff that you can see on the east side of the Big Island. Remember that since the Big Island is 4,000 square miles and growing because of all of that flowing lava, well, you're just not going to see miles and miles of white sand beaches like on the other islands. You'll see some, as well as some black sand beaches. Punalu, which is in between the volcano park and the coffee farms, is where you will see your best black beach. And for white sand, we love Hapuna on the other side of Kona, which you'll see in a minute. Okay, our tour is going to begin in South Kona and finish in the north with a secluded, very Hawaiian sandy beach. First stop, just below the town of Captain Cook, is Pahuna and the City of Refuge Monument. It's a recreation of what life must have been like back in the early Hawaiian days with huts, canoes, and petroglyphs. As a bonus, it's a really clear part of the island with gorgeous views. As far as history goes, this place is fascinating. The sanctuary is where defeated warriors and criminals could escape to to avoid punishment or death. Kona Coffee Farms dot the streets here and all follow the basic playbook. You park, you enter, you see coffee beans growing on trees, you sample coffees, and possibly take a tour of the facility. We stopped at Kona Joe's and checked it out. Now on to the main attraction. Kailua Kona is the name of the small town you'll probably be staying in while visiting. This area of the island is called Historic, and unlike most of the island, it's really walkable from the Royal Kona Resort, home to Don the Beachcomber, to up to the pier, which is where the boat tours depart and the big annual Ironman Triathlon starts. You'll pass many galleries, trinket shops, and the ABC stores, as well as the old Hula Hay Palace, which was once a summer vacation for royalty. I happen to find the view from the desk of the Royal Kona Hotel to be the best in town, an incredible place to catch a sunset in those amazing crashing waves over the lava rocks. Like I said, the best things in life are free. Take a drive about 45 minutes west to Habuna State Beach Park for that big sandy beach that I promised. Remember that if you're in Kona and want to go to the beach, you'll probably have to drive. The beach looks like it's straight out of South Pacific. It's that cool. A quiet, secluded, sandy beach far from the timeshare and zipline pitches.
Okay, the sun has set, the waves are acting up. It's time to say goodbye from our photo walk of the Big Island of Hawaii and of course the Kona section of town. Please stay tuned for more photo walk videos and I will catch you on the next photo walk. Bye.